If I had a high resolution still image that I wanted to send to a friend via the internet, one of the first things I would do is to open up my image editor and I would physically reduce the size of the image because when it's seen at the other end we want to make sure that the viewer can see it in good quality but we don't need to send a massive file. Well we're in the same sort of ball game here when we start to consider video because even a few seconds of video is going to be a fairly big size. So there are going to be times when we want to physically reduce the size of the video. Maybe if we want to use video as an inset with a still or in fact an inset into another video. I will be including this technique in amongst other videos and if you're a Photoshop Creative Cloud user you even have the ability to be able to crop a landscape video to a vertical if you have the need and I'm going to cover that a bit later. But if we were going to make changes to reduce the size of a video here, I'm going to select this video because it's an untouched video. I've got a couple of other versions here but this one is not converted at all, it's not optimized and it's the full length. So it's my intention here to reduce the size of this video so that it's less than its current HD size of 1920 x so that it plays over the top of the rock face. But of course I do have to optimize the video as well. So I may as well do both of those things in one go. And in fact, if I wanted to crop back the section of video from maybe 19 seconds to 10 seconds, then it also makes sense to do that at the same time too. Now in normal circumstances we would generally pick up the video we want to use, particularly if we're going to use it full size, and we would drag it down and we would get the little pop-up which suggests that we need to optimize the video. Let me close that and drag that back out because we want this to be running over the top of this. If I went straight to the objects and animation screen here and introduce the video this way you can see I don't get asked about optimization so it's probably going to be a good idea if we do that while the image is still in the file list or the video is still in the file list so let's make a start by selecting it right click and choose convert video clip now the main purpose of this video is resizing. So that's right down at the bottom right corner. Now we don't get an infinite choice here. We have a choice of four different sizes. Well, three really, because we've already got the 1920, 1080. So we can go down to 1280, 720, 102476, which we are going to do in another video. And on this occasion, I'll choose the smallest section, 960 by 540. Now if you work it out on a calculator, it's not going to change the shape of this at all. It's going to keep our video 16:9 aspect ratio, but let's select that. It's just going to make it smaller. I'm going to trim the video, but I'm going to do it super quick. I'm just going to drag this along until I get about 10 seconds of video and I'm looking down at the output duration just above the resize we had a few moments ago and you can see it changing as I scroll. So I have adjusted the length, I have adjusted the size, this part will take care of the optimization, all I need to do is hit the convert all or this little button here, it doesn't matter which, and the process will start. Now I've restarted my video right at the end, it didn't take too long, I could have actually probably even left the video running. But I'm going to remove that so it's clear, ready for the next thing I do in the video converter. And the good thing here is we do get the kangaroos converted, so there's the one that's been converted. Because if I look down now, I can see 960, 540 and I can see the video length is 10 seconds. 
So now I've got some confidence to just open up my rock face objects and animation screen and go and get the converted kangaroos knowing they're the correct size. So what's gone wrong here? No matter what size video or image we drag into the objects and animation screen, pictures to xe will always try to fit that to the resolution of the slideshow we are making. Now if this was a square shape, it would touch the top and bottom and leave us black bars left and right. But because the video is smaller, but it's actually the same aspect ratio, it looks no different to what we would normally see with a full screen video. But in actual fact, we would lose quality if we tried to play it at 19, 20, 1080. So all we need to do is to go to our zoom, go to this hyperlink and choose original size, or we can right click the X or the Y and choose original size. And there is the size that we actually created it. Now we have all sorts of options here and we're going to be covering these in a lot more detail a little bit later on. One of those is to add a border around our video which enables it to just stand out from the background a little bit. So I'll use six pixels there and of course we could select the background and just blur that just a little bit. And we could even add drop shadows too. But what we've effectively got here is just a little demonstration of resizing the video and that will play happily there for the 10 seconds which is the length of this particular video. Now with the spinning round of the screen you can see I've made one or two changes here. The actual resizing of a video is pretty quick and simple within pictures to xe so to bring this video to a close, it may be interesting to do a comparison. There's the video that I created a few moments ago, 965.40 reduced to 10 seconds. I'm well aware that many audiovisual enthusiasts may not go down the route I just took. So I'm going to follow what I think many people may do. I've just changed my original video to Kangaroo Test. You can see I'm back to my 1920,080 and 19 seconds of video. So what I'm going to do is optimize this as normal. So I'm going to right click, convert the video clip, but I'm not going to trim it and I'm not going to resize it. So all I'm going to do is just to optimize the video when it appears in my file list here. I'm going to bring it in on top of the rock face as I did before. There's the kangaroo test converted so I'm going to move into the objects and animation screen with the rock face, click into the grey area exactly the same as before and go and get that particular video. Now of course this video is 1920 by 1080 but of course what I could do is do exactly what I did before and just reduce the size using the zoom. I can go to the properties and I can add a border as I did before, something around six pixels I think is what I chose and it's going to do exactly the same thing. So when I come out and press play it does appear, although I've forgotten to mute the video, it does appear that I've got exactly the same in this test that I got previously. Now I've just taken my one image and one 10 second video and made it into a little demo slideshow. I've made two versions. One I've made with the kangaroos converted which as you can see is 960 pixels by 540 and one I've made and 10 seconds in length and the other one with the one where I left it at the HD size and also at 19 seconds. So in actual fact here because we're only using a 10 second slide duration we've got 9 seconds of video we're not using. Now if I take you into Windows Explorer you can see those two files. 
There's the first one where we reduced the file size of the video, 960 by 540 and 10 seconds in length. We're under 10 megabyte. But there's the other one, and we've got three times the size, and we're talking here about one single piece of video. So it definitely pays to make sure you don't use your video any bigger than you really need to.